let's solve this DPA question. In this one, you will see the importance of the visualized process skill. You will see that when you have so much of categorization happening, then visualizing everything in the form of a tree diagram makes it really easy for us to consume all the information. Now, all of this is about the trees in a certain neighborhood. And the question is telling us what are the types of these trees. First thing it tells us is that 32% of all the trees were conifers and most of the rest were deciduous. So if I try to visualize just this much, then suppose the total number of trees was 100 X, then how many of these were conifers then? These were 32 X. Then deciduous trees, when we're talking about, it's most of the rest, not all of the rest. So first of all, I try to see this rest, right? Those that are not conifers. This is going to be 68 X. And I just simply got that by subtracting here. Now, how many of these are deciduous? Do you have an exact number? You do not, because they are saying it's most of the rest. At least till now, we don't know that. But what does most mean? Most means more than half. So if I think about all of these 68x, then half would mean 34x. And so when I say more than half, I'm definitely saying that it's more than 34x. And therefore, all of the others, the ones that are not deciduous, they have to be less than 34x because the total is 68 after all. This way, we've understood the first entire sentence. Let's read further. Then they go deeper into the conifers category. They say among these, there were 258 spruces, 112 pines, along with some cedars and other species. So if I try to fill this here, of course, I can't fill the sum, but I can write the exact number for the spruces. See how till now it was in terms of X, but now you have something more solid. You have your pines here. And then as for cedars and other species, I'm just going to keep this here because it's just something. I don't know the numbers. Okay, I made this slightly neater. Although I can't say anything about the numbers here because there were some, I can at least say these are both positive numbers. It's going to be something more than zero. Now read further. Next piece of information is about when you go deeper into the deciduous type, it is saying most of deciduous trees were oaks. Okay, so here are your deciduous trees and now most of these. I don't even have a number for how many deciduous trees it is. It's just something more than 34. But still, if I write it this way, I'm saying it's more than half of this number, which itself is more than 34x. It's like two inequalities I'm dealing with. I know it looks complicated, but what I can be sure of is that this thing is definitely more than 17x. And then what else? But one in eight was a maple. So this is when you're talking about the deciduous trees again. So they went into another category here, the maples. And how many? One in eight, which means it's one eighth of this number, which is more than 34x. Again, this is just going to give me an inequality only. I'll leave it as is here. This is how many maples there are. Then they're talking further, still not stopping here. Now they say of the oaks. So this time I will go deeper into the oaks here, which is here. Now, of the oaks, 65% were red, 25% were white oaks. That means you can go here within oaks to talk about red and white both. And how? Although it's giving me a percentage, but I still don't have the number of total oaks anyway. So it will still be something which is in the form of a range. You know, these are the possible values. Then finally, is that it? No. They're finally giving you one last piece of information, which is about the maples, that of the maples, 20% were Japanese maples. So now I am in this side of the maples and within this category, they're saying you take 20% of this number to get Japanese maples. How do I represent that? 20% is simply going to be 0.2 times this thing, which itself is a range. So at this point, I do not have precise numbers for most of the things, except, you know, these here, spruces, pines, and these are also in terms of X, but most of the rest of it is just, just a range. Let's see now, we have completely understood everything. There was quite a lot of translation required. See how important it was to do this step by step. If somebody reads all of this at once, then they would most likely be lost with all of the detail. And I'm sure that when somebody would suddenly ask a question about any data point here, they would not have the clarity. And to be able to answer, they would have to go back to all of this text. But for us, because we have represented it so nicely here, we do not need to read all of that text again. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation, as 
part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Now then, since we've understood this, we will go into what the question is asking. And here you are. So we need to select for A and B, which are here your column headers. You need to select two types of trees such that ratio of number of trees of type A to number of trees of type B. Just see how much more complicated their language is. But actually what it's simply saying is, you know, number of trees in the first type. So just call it number A over number B. This ratio can be determined first of all. It should not be something whose value you cannot be sure of. That means I'm talking about actual value, not just a range, okay? So this is one thing. Second, this ratio should be less than one. At least from the less than one part, I can already understand that it will be less than one if this number A is less than number of trees in B. That's one inference I can draw already. Now, when you look at your choices, you have these six choices here, six types of trees. And we first will try to see which one can be determined. So we can look at them one by one also, or we can first go to our tree diagram and see where is it that you can even determine it. So it should not be something which is completely in the form of a range. If you notice, you can talk about how many conifers out of the total trees. You can talk about non-conifers out of total. It will give you a ratio. You cannot talk about deciduous out of the rest or out of the total because this is just a range. Wherever it's just a range, it will be hard to talk about that as a ratio of the parent category. You cannot talk about oaks to deciduous, for example, right? Now, where is it that you actually did have some stuff? You can talk about the red and the white oaks out of the total oaks because you had exact percentages here. Similarly, you can talk about maple out of deciduous because this was an exact ratio, one is to eight and so on. I can keep checking for more. But with this understanding, I'm now ready to see which out of these choices, where can I form a pair where, first of all, I will be able to determine the ratio. Then I'll think about the less than one part. So let me take these choices to the tree diagram first. And here we are. Now let's think about these choices. First one, you're talking about cedars. Let's see. Cedars is something I don't know anything about. I don't know how many cedars I have, so there's no way I can connect it with conifers or total or anything, which means cedars cannot be the answer for any of these columns. I'll simply cross it out. Now if I think about the next choice, which is conifers, if you see this is in terms of x, so I can talk about it as a ratio, as a fraction of the total, but do I have totals? No, I don't have total in the choices, and therefore I cannot compare conifers with anything else as well. Next, let's see deciduous trees. Now, because this is a range, I cannot find anything about deciduous and its parent category, but let's see if we can come deeper. So deciduous to oaks, no, that's also a range. I could go deeper within oaks, but not with deciduous. So my focus has to be only here. Now, if I see deciduous to maple, I definitely have a clear relationship. I will be able to determine the ratio. So do I have maples here as well? I don't, otherwise deciduous would have been it. Now though, maple is connected with Japanese maple. Do I have that at least? I do. So let's try to see if I can find a connection between deciduous and Japanese maples. Think about it. You know maple forms one-eighth of deciduous. You also know that Japanese maples form 20% of maples. Overall, this means you can find the ratio of Japanese maples to deciduous as well. And therefore, I do have the two categories that will work. I don't even need to check anything further. So I have found where it can be determined. But remember, this is not it. There was one more condition. Let's take this back down. Here we are. So next thing to see was that number in A should be less than number in B. That's mainly just to choose which between these two will be marked for A and which one for B. Now think about it. Ja deciduous trees was the parent category. Within that, you went to maples and then to Japanese maples. So obviously, the number of Japanese maples is smaller. So I'll take that as A and I'll take deciduous as B. And we are done. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course, and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate, and visualize. 
Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Let's now nicely summarize this. We started by completely understanding this question, which had a lot of detail and that became very easy to process because we kept visualizing it simultaneously. We read it piece by piece and kept converting it into this very neat tree diagram so that we didn't have to go back to the question text again. After that, once we came into the question, we saw what was asked. We very clearly wrote down the conditions that had to be satisfied by these A and B numbers. We understood by going back to our own tree diagram to see where is it to see some examples of where we can find a ratio and where we cannot. Cannot was when you had just ranges or just about nothing and can was when you had shorter relationships. Then finally you simply had to see which one is the smaller number, which one greater, mark A, B and done. So the power of owning the data set up front was very nicely shown in this question. When you do that well, answering the final question becomes very straightforward.